What is going on, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by Picmonic. We will continue our microbiology discussions. We had four videos like this before. Today is part number five. It's gonna be epic. In part number one, we have talked about these bacteria. Part number two, talked about these. Part number three, here. And part number four is here. Today, it's time to talk about Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus cereus, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and Mycobacterium leprae. All of them are anatomically gram-positive bacteria. But hey, medicosis, why did you say anatomically gram-positive? Why don't you just say gram-positive? I'll tell you, because when we tried to stain the two mycobacteria with gram stain, they did not stain. But we know that they have the same characteristics as gram-positive bacteria. So theoretically, they have the same characteristics. But in the lab, when we tried the gram stain, it did not work. What worked then? Acid fast stain. Microbiology is the study of small life. We're talking about bacteria, fungi, viruses, parasites. That's why we have bacteriology, mycology, virology, parasitology. How do we name bugs, kingdom, phylum, class, orders, family, genus, species? So when I say Staph aureus, Staph is the genus, aureus is the species. Gram stain include gram positive and gram negative. Each one is divided into cocci and rods. In video number one, we have talked about these, and these were spore forming gram positive bacilli. In video number two, we have talked about these, the clostridia. They are also gram positive rods. Video number three, staph, and these are gram positive cocci. Video number four with the strep, pneumo, strep, verdans, group A strep, group B strep, inner cocci, and bovis. And these are what? These are gram positive cocci that happen to be catalase negative. Now let's talk about these four. The first two stain with gram. The second two do not stain with gram. That's why you have to use the acid fast stain. The two bacilli are spore forming. The two mycobacteria are non spore forming. Bacillus anthracis causes anthrax. Anthrax is not the same as anthracosis, of course. Bacillus cereus causes food poisoning, watery diarrhea, especially when you eat reheated rice. Mycobacterium tuberculosis causes uh, tuberculosis. Mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy. Anthrax is a severe respiratory disease or cutaneous disease or GI disease. It can also be used as a bioweapon. Bacillus cereus, reheated rice, causing watery diarrhea. It's a heat-stable toxin. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, this is TB. You have pneumonia, and then when it becomes systemic, you can get TB in your vertebra, TB in your kidneys, in your adrenal gland, even TB in your brain. Mycobacterium leprae is leprosy, aka Hansen disease, skin problems, sensory nerves are gone, your face looks like a lion, and your fingers are falling off. Pause and review. In this picmonic, we describe the characteristics of Bacillus anthracis, which is shown as the Rod's Amtrak train making a tour across America on a campaign trail. Bacillus anthracis is a gram-positive bacteria, shown as the gram-cracker-positive angel. This is a spore-forming bacteria, shown here as the spore bomb. Bacillus anthracis has a D-glutamate polypeptide capsule, the D-glutamato polypeptide in a capsule. There are three important toxins that allow the bacteria to cause harm. The first is protective antigen, shown here as the protective shield ant gem. The second is lethal toxin, the lethal toxic barrel. And the third toxin is edema factor, which we portray as the edamame. Edema factor leads to increased CAMP in the cell, which we show here as the up arrow cycle amp. So in short, anthrax is a gram-positive bacteria that is spore-forming. It has a D-glutamate polypeptide capsule. There are three toxins that allow this bacteria to be harmful, protective antigen, lethal toxin, and edema factor. Edema factor leads to increased CAMP in the cell. Bacillus anthracis that causes anthrax is depicted here by the Amtrak train. It's a gram-positive angel, spore-forming, and has the D-glutamate polypeptide. The virulent factors include a protective antigen, a lethal toxin, and an edema factor. How does the edema factor cause edema by increasing cyclic AMP? And this is very important because later when we talk about the gram-negative bacteria that cause diarrhea, I'll tell you that many of them cause diarrhea by increasing cyclic AMP, which attracts water. When you attract water, you can swell the edema factor or you can get diarrhea. 
In this pigmonic, we explore the symptoms seen in those who are infected by Bacillus anthracis, a disease known as anthrax, shown by the Rod's Amtrak train which is blown up after a terrorist attack. It can manifest as cutaneous disease, the skin suit man who watches in horror as his friend is blasted, developing black eschars on his skin suit while holding up a no pain bolt sign because he swears it didn't hurt at all. This represents the painless black eschar that develops with cutaneous anthrax. The necrosis crow eating a leech represents that this is a necrotic lesion. Pulmonary anthrax, shown as the lungs, begins with mediastinal widening, the widened mediastinum that occurred from the rod debris getting lodged into this lung's mediastinum. This lung has rapidly died from the rod as pulmonary anthrax is rapidly fatal. Wool sorter's disease is a form of pulmonary anthrax that occurs from lung infections stemming from bacteria in sheep's wool, shown as the wool sweater made from the animals killed in the blast. Another type of bacillus infection is gastrointestinal, which is rare and is shown by the GI guy. He doesn't want the dead sheep to go to waste, so he eats the infected meat, which explains that this form of disease occurs from consuming anthrax-infected meat. So in summary, bacillus anthracis has different symptoms depending on what form of the disease is contracted. Cutaneous anthrax leads to painless black eschars, which are necrotic lesions. Pulmonary anthrax leads to mediastinal widening and is rapidly fatal. In the textile industry, it can occur and is called wool sorter's disease. Gastrointestinal anthrax occurs after eating anthrax-infected meat. So what are the symptoms that are caused by anthrax? Well, it depends. We have three types of anthrax. We have cutaneous anthrax, we have pulmonary anthrax, also known as wool sorter's disease, and last, we have gastrointestinal anthrax. Let's start with the cutaneous anthrax. What's going on? You have a painless scar, necrotic tissue. What happens in pulmonary anthrax? Well, it's a horrible disease. Think of bleeding into my lungs, pulmonary hemorrhage. Think of mediastinitis, and if you do a chest x-ray, you will see a widened mediastinum. Historically, this disease affected people working in the textile industry, and they got wool sorter's disease, which is what? Pulmonary anthrax. Last, we have gastrointestinal anthrax, and you get it by consuming anthrax-infected meat. Because don't forget, anthrax is spore-forming. The characteristics of the bacteria Bacillus cereus can be retold through the story of the rods and seared rice. Bacillus cereus, rods, seared rice. This bacteria is gram-positive, the graham cracker positive angel, who is cooking this meal on a wok, adding rods to the seared rice, because these bacteria are bacilli, or rod-shaped. This bacteria is endospore-forming, the inside spore cracking open like a protective eggshell to pour the rods into the food. Bacillus cereus is beta-hemolytic, the beta fish in the petri dish, who is on display as the catch of the day. It produces toxins and enterotoxins, which lead to the symptoms seen in people, shown as the toxic barrel and intestine toxins, which are squeezing out a sauce as a garnish for the sushi. Though it looks gourmet, the catch of the day is actually served over reheated rice, which is a common food that leads to illness from this bacteria. So to review, Bacillus cereus is a gram-positive bacillus, which is endospore-forming and beta-hemolytic. Toxins and enterotoxins are formed by this bacteria, some of which are heat-stable and can cause illness through reheated rice. Let's talk about Bacillus cereus, gram-positive, bacillus or a rod, endospore-forming, and this spore protects it. It's beta-hemolytic, it secretes toxin and enterotoxin, it affects you if you eat reheated rice. Why? Because many of its toxins are heat stable. We have two types of toxins. We have heat labile toxins, they will get destroyed by heat. And we have heat stable toxins, which are not affected by heat. So the idea that I will get dirty contaminated food and put it on the stove on a frying pan and the heat is gonna destroy everything, that's not true. The heat will destroy lots of stuff, but it's not gonna destroy everything because many toxins are heat stable. Such is the toxin of the Bacillus cereus. Bacillus cereus disease can be recalled by the restaurant that serves rods and seared rice. Remember, Bacillus rods, cereus seared rice. There's a mild form of disease called the emetic form, shown by the medic, who is eating the rice out of the short incubator with his one wand 
while playing his sixth sax. He's doing this because the emetic form of disease has a short incubation period of one to six hours. Shortly after ingestion of toxins, patients display nausea and vomiting, the medic vomiting out of his six sacs. The other form of bacillus serious disease is the diarrheal form, which has more severe symptoms and is shown by the toilet in the stall. This disease is associated with a long incubation period of 8 to 16 hours, the long incubator where this GI guy was celebrating his birthday at the restaurant. His long incubator was decorated with an eight-ball balloon for his sweet 16 celebration. Patients complain of the diarrhea and GI pain that can last up to 24 hours with this form of the bacillus serious foodborne illness, which is shown as the toilet being used by the GI guy with pain bolts, whose birthday wasn't what he quite expected. Remember bacillus serious disease like this. People are eating at the Rods in Seared Rice Restaurant. A medic eats out of a short incubator with his one wand, only to vomit out his six sacks. On another side of the restaurant, the GI guy is agonizing over a toilet because of pain bolts. He was trying to celebrate his birthday with an eight ball on his sweet 16th birthday, eating food out of a long incubator. So when it comes to bacillus serious disease, I would like to divide the slide into two sections. Here you have the early disease, and here you have the late disease. Early symptoms are emetic, which means I'm vomiting. Late symptoms are diarrheal. When does the early disease happen? On average, it's like two hours after you eat the reheated rice. How about the diarrheal one? It can happen like 10 hours after you eat the warm or reheated rice. The first one has nausea and vomiting. The second one has diarrhea and GI pain. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is the bacterial cause of tuberculosis. Think of it like this mic-wielding bacteria on a TB TV that uses its bad news to infiltrate homes and wreak havoc. It is among the most common causes of death worldwide from an infectious disease. Mycobacteria are intracellular aerobic pathogens that are noted for having mycolic acid in their cell walls, the mike acidic lemon wall, which prevents them from being easily detected by Gram stain. Instead, they are detected using acid-fast stains, the acidic lemon running fast. These are special stains, such as the carbolfuxin stain, the carbom fuse, which turns bacteria red. Lowenstein Jensen agar is a selective medium used to grow mycobacteria in the lab, seen as the Lowenstein Jetson. Another mycobacteria cell component is serpentine cord factor, the serpent cord. This molecule causes bacteria to arrange themselves in long cords that appear serpent-like. There are two main forms of tuberculosis, primary and reactivation. Primary tuberculosis is the form of disease that occurs in a previously unexposed person. It can result in both localized and disseminated infection, which can lead to death. The inhaled bacteria create a locus of inflammation in the lungs, which becomes a caseating granuloma, the cheese-eating granny llama, referring to a cheese-like appearance on gross examination. Granulomas seen on x-ray can be called a gone focus, the gong focus. From there, the bacilli can drain into regional parahylar lymph nodes of the lungs, the Hitler with lymph lime, causing hyler lymphadenopathy. The combination of a gone focus with parahylar lymphadenopathy is termed a gone complex, the complex gong. If the initial infection is untreated and the host survives, the bacteria can become quiescent and hidden from the immune system for years. Reactivation tuberculosis occurs when this latent tuberculosis reactivates into active disease. Disease is often localized to the lungs and is characterized by reactivation in the apex, the reactivation button on the mountain apex. This is an aerobic environment where the bacteria thrive. So in summary, mycobacterium tuberculosis is the causative agent of tuberculosis. These bacteria have mycolic acid in their cell walls, and so can only be visualized by acid-fast stains such as carbolfuxin. Lowenstein Jensen agar is used to grow mycobacteria. Serpentine cord factor is a virulence factor that aligns the bacteria in cord-like shapes. Primary TB occurs upon first exposure to the bacteria and can involve the formation of pulmonary caseating granulomas. A gone focus is a granuloma seen on x-ray, and if there's concurrent parahylar lymphadenopathy, it is termed a gone complex.
Reactivation TB occurs after reactivation of latent disease and often localizes to the apices of the lung. Mycobacterium tuberculosis has mycolic acid. That's why you cannot stain it with gram stain, but you can stain it with acid fast stain. It can grow on Lonestein Jensen agar. It has serpentine cord factor, which is the virulent factor. We have two types of TB, primary TB and reactivation TB. Primary TB have the caseating granuloma with the GONS focus. If you have the GON focus plus TB lymph angiitis plus TB lymph adenitis, we call this the GON complex. The complex has three things. Reactivation TB usually goes to the apex of the lung. If it's a systemic disease, it's going to go everywhere. This picmonic is a continuation of our Mycobacterium tuberculosis characteristics picmonic. So if you haven't yet, check that one out. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is the bacterial cause of the systemic disease tuberculosis. It is represented in this picmonic as the story of the mike wielding bacteria that uses bad news on the TBTV to turn people into zombies. Disease typically begins in the lungs after inhalation of the organisms, which can then spread to any organ in the body depending on the host's immune status. Systemic symptoms of infection are constitutional and include fever, the fever beaver, due to cytokine release. Night sweats, the moon sweats, are common. Weight loss, the skinny man in baggy jeans, can also occur. Hemoptysis, the red mop coughing blood, is common in pulmonary TB. Tuberculosis can enter the bloodstream and spread beyond the lungs into various organs, called disseminated TB or extrapulmonary disease, represented by extra newspaper boy and lungs. When the adrenal glands are involved, it can result in primary adrenal insufficiency, or Addison's disease, the ad sun. When disseminated to the central nervous system, the CNS brain, patients can develop meningitis with headache, neck stiffness, and cranial nerve dysfunction. Liver involvement can present with abdominal pain and jaundice. Kidney involvement, shown as the kidneys, can present nonspecifically with pyuria and hematuria. GI findings, the intestines, often reflect infection of the peritoneum and intestines, resulting in abdominal pain, ascites, and diarrhea. Bone involvement, shown as the skeleton, can include arthritis and osteomyelitis, with pain and inflammation at involved sites. When TB infects the vertebrae, it's called tuberculosis spondylitis, or POTS disease, the POTS vertebra. This can cause pain and vertebral collapse. In summary, tuberculosis can present with a range of clinical findings. Constitutional symptoms are frequent and include fever, night sweats, and weight loss. In pulmonary TB, hemoptysis is common as well. When TB spreads to the bloodstream, it can cause extrapulmonary disease in any organ. Adrenal gland involvement can cause Addison's disease. CNS spread can result in meningitis. Liver, kidney, and GI involvement will cause pain and dysfunction of the implicated organs. Bone disease commonly affects the vertebrae known as POTS disease or tuberculosis spondylitis. Diseases caused by the TBTV. We have constitutional symptoms such as fever, weight loss, night sweats. You can also get hemoptysis. As the disease spreads, it becomes systemic all over your body, including adrenal insufficiency known as Addison disease, CNS symptoms such as tuberculous meningitis or tuberculous encephalitis, also liver disease and kidney disease. Can also affect your GI and when it comes to your vertebrae, we call it POT disease. Mycobacterium leprae, shown here as the leopard with the mic, is the microbiologic cause of leprosy. This bacteria is aerobic, displayed by the aerobic outfit worn by the leopard. Like other mycobacteria, Mycobacterium leprae exhibits acid fast staining, shown by the lemon running with the acid fast sign. It also replicates best in cool temperatures, portrayed by the leopard laying on the ice blocks, leaving the skin and extremities more vulnerable to infection. Mycobacterium leprae causes two different patterns of disease depending on the patient's immune response. The less severe form is called tuberculoid leprosy, the leopard in the tube, and occurs in patients with an intact immune response, represented by the strong, healthy-looking leopard. The immune system of these patients exhibits a granulomatous response, the granulama. 
A positive Lepramin skin test will also be seen, depicted by the guy in the skin suit with the thumbs up sign toward the leopard in the tube. Treatment involves the antibiotics Dapsone, shown by the diaper sun, and Rifampin, the ref amp. Microbacterium leprae can cause a second form of disease called Lepromatous leprosy, shown by the leopard in the other corner without a tube. This occurs in patients with a weak immune system, depicted by the weak leopard. Inflammation involving the face can cause disfigurement, known as leonine facies, shown by the lion face. Due to the weak immune response, the Lepermin skin test in this form of disease is negative, shown by the guy in the skin suit with the thumbs down sign. Treatment requires clofazamine to be added to the antibiotic regimen, shown by the clover with a fez. So, in summary, Mycobacterium leprae is an aerobic, acid-fast bacteria that proliferates best in cool temperatures. There are two forms of this disease. The first is tuberculoid leprosy, which occurs in healthy patients and evokes a granulomatous response, as well as a positive lepromin skin test. Treatment involves the antibiotics Dapsone and Rifampin. The second form of disease is called lepromatous leprosy, which occurs in immunocompromised patients. It's characterized by leonine facies and a negative lepromin skin test. Treatment requires the addition of clofazamine. All right, leprosy, which is a disease caused by Mycobacterium leprae. This bacteria is aerobic and acid fast. It loves cold temperatures. Leprosy has two different diseases depending on your immunity. Whether you have good immunity or bad immunity, it's a different scenario. If I have good immunity, it means what? It means you that your immune response is robust, but the bacteria load is low. So we have few bacteria, but a robust immunity. And therefore, you will be able to make a granuloma because you have strong macrophages. And if you can make a granuloma, we can detect that using the Lepramin test. And we'll call this tuberculoid leprosy. Why tuberculoid? Because it's similar to tuberculosis. What does tuberculosis have? A granuloma. But if I'm immunocompromised, my immunity is weak and I have high bacterial load. And since my immune response is history, I will not be able to form a granuloma and I will get a negative lepromin test. And this is called lepromatous leprosy. This is such a severe disease that can make my face look like a lion. Tuberculoid leprosy is treated with Dapsone and Rifampin, but if you have the ugly Lepromatous leprosy, you need Dapsone, Rifampin plus Clofazamine. Picmonic lets you browse in accordance to your favorite book. You can also browse by discipline or by system. They make a fresh new quiz for you every day. You can even create a study schedule. This is my methodology of using Picmonic. Spaced repetition is key. You tend to remember better when you use more than one cranial nerve. We have compared among Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, Staph saprophyticus, and Strep pneumo in previous videos. We talked about the viridans, pyogenes, agalactia, enterococci, and bovis. Even actinomyces is really listeria, corinobacterium, diphtheria, and nocardia. Moreover, we've covered all the clostridia. You can check the previous videos in my playlist called Picmonic Medicosis. Now it's time to compare among Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus cereus, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and Mycobacterium leprae. All of them are anatomically gram-positive rods. All of them are bacteria. But in the lab, only two stained with gram, and this is the two bacilli. But the Mycobacteria did not stain well with gram, so we use an acid-fast stain. Acid-fast has many techniques and they can show up on your exam. And these techniques include zeal nielsen stain, phyte stain, uramine rhodamine stain, uramine phenol stain, and others. Anthracis and cereus are spore forming, the others are not. How do I get bacillus anthracis? Animal or animal products, it's a bioweapon, or if you eat contaminated meat, or if you inhale the spores. It's also the wool sorter's disease. When it comes to Bacillus cereus, this is the warm or reheated rice. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, droplets, fecal-oral, skin, etc. Don't forget the reactivation of tuberculosis when you are immunocompromised. Mycobacterium leprae, droplets, secretions, prolonged skin-to-skin -skin contact. Virulent factor for anthrax is the anthrax toxin. Why is it toxic? Because it has protective antigen, lethal factor, and edema factor. In Bacillus cereus, it's called cereus, so cerealide toxin. 
enterotoxin and this toxin is preformed it's also heat stable that's why even if you reheat the rice the toxin is not going anywhere but hey medicosis i will eat the warm reheated rice and then i will take amoxicillin uh, amoxicillin is an antibiotic anti-bio bio means living antibiotics can kill bacteria but they cannot kill toxins for the most part virulence factors for mycobacterium tuberculosis is the code factor also it has sulfatide but why does it stain with the acid fast stain because it has mycolic acid so when the professor asks you why is mycobacterium tuberculosis acid fast it's because of the mycolic acid why is it virulent because of the code factor mycobacterium leprae loves cool temperature and sensory nerves symptoms of anthrax include fever pulmonary hemorrhage and mediastinitis if you get the cutaneous anthrax you will get an s car if you contract the GI subtype, you will get GI symptoms. Bacillus cereus will give you watery diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. It starts at 1 to 5 hours. Later symptoms can come between 8 and 16 hours. Tuberculosis, don't forget your caseating granuloma, the GONS complex or the GONS triad, and miliary TBs all over your body. TB meningitis, TB in your vertebra, that's pot disease, and Addison, which is adrenal insufficiency. Tuberculous Edisonian crisis can be fatal. Leprosy, we have skin, sensory nerves are affected in a glove and stocking distribution. Line-like faces and your fingers are lost. How do I diagnose anthrax? Gram stain, PCR, caput midose. Yeah, right, the head of midose or caput midose. Where else have you heard of caput midose? Oh yeah, in cirrhosis. You can also use something called the S. coli test. Bacillus cereus is a clinical diagnosis. You cannot stain a toxin. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, you have the purified protein derivative skin test, you have the interferon gamma release assay, you have chest x-ray, and you have biopsy to see the beautiful caseating granuloma. Mycobacterium leprae does not grow on gram stain, you cannot culture it, so we can only biopsy or do PCR. How do we treat anthrax? Ciprofloxacin, doxycycline, especially prophylactically, if you suspect exposure. Bacillus cereus, it's self-limiting, so just provide supportive care and watchful waiting. Mycobacterium tuberculosis has many medications. The most famous are these four. Ripe, rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol. Don't forget this rifampin because we'll use it here for leprosy. Rifampin and dapsone. If you're immunocompromised, add clofazamine. Quick review, bacillus anthracis characteristics. It's a gram positive, spore forming. It has the D-glutamate polypeptide capsule. Remember the triad. You have protective antigen, lethal factor, edema factor. How does it cause edema? It increases cyclic AMP. Anthrax disease. We have three types. We have cutaneous anthrax, we have pulmonary anthrax, and we have GI anthrax. If it's cutaneous anthrax, you get SCARs, necrotic tissue. If it's pulmonary anthrax, you get pulmonary hemorrhage and mediastinitis with widened mediastinum on chest x-ray. If it's the GI anthrax, you get GI symptoms. Another organism, Bacillus cereus, gram-positive bacilli. They are spore-forming. You have a toxin and an enterotoxin, beta-hemolytic reheated rice. If you eat this reheated rice, you can get what? Well, it depends on time frame. If I said the symptoms started between one to six hours, think of the emetic type, nausea and vomiting. But if I say that the symptoms started 8 to 16 hours after eating the rice, think of the diarrheal subtype. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, here's the TB, TV. It has mycolic acid, that's why it doesn't stain with gram. Instead, use acid fast stain, such as carbophosphine stain, or zeal nielsen, or phyte, or oramine rhodamine stain. TB can grow on lonestein jensen agar. It has the serpentine cord factor. Primary TB will give you caseating granuloma and the GONS focus. When you add TB lymphangitis and TB lymph adenitis, we call it the GONS complex. Secondary or reactivation TB affects the apex of the lungs. Mycobacterium tuberculosis can cause what? Uh, tuberculosis symptoms. You have constitutional symptoms such as fever, weight loss, night sweats. And then when it spreads all over your body, you get kidney problems, liver problems, GI problems, CNS problems, pot disease, and TB Addison disease. Mycobacterium leprae is acid fast. It is 
aerobic. If your immunity is strong, you get tuberculoid leprosy with granuloma and positive lepromid test. But if your immunity is weak, you get the lepromatous leprosy with a negative lepromid test and no granuloma. How do you treat this? Dapsone and rifampin. How do you treat this? Dapsone and rifampin plus clofazamine. Today we have watched seven picmonics, but there are more than 1,400 of these doozy picmonics at picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. We have covered these bacteria before, but there is more. There are gazillions of these. Go to picmonic and they have picmonics for almost everything. You can watch picmonics about microbiology, pharmacology, genetic disease, and OBGYN. This is my favorite part of picmonic. But wait, there is more. There is anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, psychology, and internal medicine. Can I try it for free? Yes, you can. Check the link in the description box. They have something like 50,000 high-yield facts. But not just facts, animated facts. These picmonics are clean. You can also watch more than a thousand Picmonics on their apps. So what are you waiting for? Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. Thank you guys for watching this video and thanks Picmonic for making this video possible. It's a mnemonic in a picture. Yeah.